in the Paris show, she wore this dress with a huge lion. Like a real lion? It looks like a real lion, but no, it's for Well, maybe the lion needs flowers. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back to Pinky Rose Floral. Today, we are going to make one of these, a boutonniere. This is Pinky with Pinky Rose Floral, and welcome to my channel. On this channel, we'll learn about floral design basics and advanced tips, different types of flowers, both fresh and silk, and different ways to apply them into your daily life and for your special events. Join me and learn the different facets of floral design. Hi guys, welcome back to Pinky Rose Floral. And today we have a special guest, our longtime family friend, Patsy. Welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. We are going to make today a boutonniere. So, Pat, have you ever made one? No, not at all. No. It's super easy. Um, we'll go over the materials, our supplies, and um, we'll make it together. Today we have the Akito Rose. She's she's white. She has a beautiful opening, um, and she keeps its shape. So this rose is actually a great rose for boutonnieres. Um, so Pat's all I know there's different types of roses. Yeah, a bajillion varieties. Um, so if you have any, um, petals that are messed up or broken, yeah, and these are called guard petals, so we can just remove them, and you can blow on them a little bit just to release the petals. Aikido has lots of, um, thorns, and they're very sharp, they're very sharp, <laughs> as you can see. So we are not even going to remove them since we're making the boutonniere and we're going to keep uh, this boutonniere very short. So you have cutters there and I have cutters here too. So we're going to um, cut about in an angle about like half an inch. Cut right there. Yep. And then, but don't cut your finger. Okay. So we're going to cut that. So along with our rows. Um, we also have some greenery that will we'll accent. Today this is Ruscus or Florida Ruscus or Israeli Ruscus. It's nice and green. The points are nice with a little curve to them. And I like to use the, the top, just like two or three blooms, uh, not blooms, or leaves. Uh, but you can use English ivy if you have boxwood growing. I know your mom grows a lot of cool stuff. So you can use clippings from your garden. And then it's always nice to use a filler flower. And this is the infamous baby's breath or gypsophilia. And she has lots of pretty tiny, tiny blooms, the white. This is a whole lot, uh, actually too much. But just for you guys to see it and we'll just trim back and use a grouping of it as a little accent. So along with our product, we'll need some wire. So at your local craft store, um, there's different gauges or um, the weights of the wire. So Pat's if you see this, yeah, the thickness. So that one is actually a 26 gauge. So it's super thin, right? And then this one is a 20 gauge and you see that one's a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. Why is there different thicknesses? What's the purpose of that? So we're gonna use different thickness because a rose stem is thick and then for our baby's breath, it's a little bit thinner and for our, our leaves. Do they get their own wires? Yes, yes, yes. They'll get their own wires. We've already cut these in third, so you'll have a handy dandy wire cutter. And we've cut them already. So this is our thin wire here, um, our thick wire here, and then a boutonniere pin that you have as well. We're gonna remove any damaged um, petals. You can blow on it to release some of the petals as well of the rows. And then we're going to take the thick wire. I'm just gonna take one and one for you. Right here, Patsy, on uh, about 
a quarter of an inch from the top of the head, you're gonna actually pierce its kind of neck in the middle and you're gonna bring it through all the way. Just put some pressure on it and bring it all the way through like that. About an inch, a little over an inch, we're gonna come down. So this is florist tape. And the cool thing with florist tape is actually if you feel it, you have to feel it. It's kind of papery, kind of crepe, kind of crepe paper. But when actually you stretch it and when you twist it around the wire, that was the, that's how it sticks. The trick for the florist tape is, is kind of starting it. So up on top here, we're gonna wrap it around and then pinch it, kind of wrap it around first and do a pinch. Okay, so do this pass is pinch it here with your right, with your thumb and index finger, like this. And then you're just gonna speed the florist tape there. Does it matter which side? No, okay. So, but we're not gonna start pulling yet, okay? So you, you have it secure. And so now with your left hand, you're, um, you're gonna release, and there's just gonna be a little bit of tension, and you're, we're twisting with our right. So it's kind of like patting your head and, and rubbing your tummy. So we're turning and turning with our right, and we're stretching the tape with our left. So turn, right, stretch, left. Turn, <laughs> left, and... Turn right, stretch, left. It could be a dance. It's just this keeps getting in the way. The seatbelt. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. And so, and you don't even have to tape all the way. So when, once I'm down here, I'm just going to pull. And then I'm done. And so with the boutonniere, um, we'll use the baby's breath. And so I like to kind of see the top, which one is nice and pretty. Um, we'll probably use maybe two to three kind of clusters together. Oh, you've got a night and windy whistles look. With our baby's breath, since they're tiny, tiny little um, blooms like this, it's like so many carnations. Can you tell me? Uh, so you have your mini bouquet, and this could be your gypsophilia, baby's breath, or this could be wax flower, um, solidago, so there's different, different um, accent flowers. So you have a thin wire, so what, what we're gonna do is just do the same, kind of feed it through all of our stems there. And then bring it down. And then my stems are still long, so I'm gonna actually trim back mine. But I'm gonna keep enough so that they can attach to the wire, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna do it again, but adding to our rows. So you want to see like where the, your, the front of your flower is. So my front is right here. It's under here. Okay. But now I always like, because the boutonnieres go to when you're looking at the person, it goes to their left, to your right. So I always like my accent flower also to the right. Am I right? Uh, yes, you're right. So this is your front. So mine would go like this. So kind of here in the corner there, just fluffing it out. Oh, kind of like curling it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because basically your focal flower is a rose, right? And you don't want your accent flower to overtake. Right, exactly. It's a little bit tricky because now you have more more to hold, yep. So you're gonna just pinch and secure the top first. Maybe you go one or two around so it's secure. Or three times. 
and then hold. With the boutonniere, you wanna you wanna thin all of this out, right? So with our thicker wire, we're gonna we're gonna lay that down, and then here we want to angle up so our our wire or the bottom of our boutonniere isn't bulky. Just cut here and angle up. Got it. Okay. So now that you've trimmed that back, we're going to do the same thing again. Pinch up on top and pull. But here, since this has a lot of um, stems and the wire, we want to make sure we're going over that a couple of times so uh, no one gets poked. And that it's really a, kind of a smooth transition to the your bigger wire. And you don't have to go all the way down because we're gonna trim. And then you can just pull it off your florist tape. And then you got it. We're real nice. So after that, the last thing we're going to add is the leaf or the greenery. So I like to use the tips, just the little small leaves up on top. I would just trim these three are kind of close to each other. So what I'm gonna do is just trim here. I'll, I'm trying to go as close as possible to the next set of leaves. And so this is what I have. Yep, we can either pierce it or we can um, go around it. Um, sometimes, see how thin it is though? Sometimes if we're going around it like this, if you pull too hard, it'll separate from uh, your stem. So to get some movement on our leaves, you can pierce here through the bottom. See those little tiny, tiny little veins? Uh -huh. um, we're gonna just pierce here, not too close to the end, but about a, half, a quarter inch towards the bottom. We're gonna pinch there and then bring it around. Yeah. Okay, great. So you have a little um, wire left over. And so with our greenery, it's really gonna be kind of like a collar, right? Because this is all white. This will have a nice little contrast. Um, and so we're just gonna see where this is gonna be placed. If you want, we can also do an extra step and take this piece. Uh -huh. So we can do that just to show every, yeah, to show everybody. Just put a little bit of tape on there and then twist. And you're twisting really with your right hand and then just kind of feeding the, the tape with your left. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then just a little bit of tension on the left hand. Yep. And you don't have to go all the way down because we're gonna tape again. Yeah. Like that. And then you can go ahead and pull that one. So it has that nice deep green, right, against our white. You just kind of play with it, kind of like Tetris, you know? See where it can go. You can bring it either here in the back, feels a little like it's hiding, or here to the left, maybe. Um, just wherever you think it fits. And it's really like a little collar, and it hides. Um, the sepals too, which um, hold your rows together. So we're gonna again secure on top, and twist and pull. And then also we're gonna trim, trim away excess. Yeah, so it's not so heavy. So just right there. And then going a little bit over so it smooths it out. And then you can just pull the tape and it'll just release from the wire. Wow, do you like it? Barrel's pretty. The wire gives it like stability. Yeah, for actually move it around. Exactly, exactly. Basically, this is our boutonniere, right? And now we're just gonna trim 
the end. So I like to give it some length about, it looks like it maybe an inch and a quarter, I think. And it'll just be a flat, um, a straight cut versus um, an, an angle. So you just don't want to stack anyone's clothes. And depending how, how your end is, you just want to make sure it's not too long. Maybe a little bit. You can either uh, finish it like this, give it a little spray. Um, here's the boutonniere pin. And before you present it or uh, give it, this would just pop into the top. So you never want to go, obviously, through it. Mm -hmm. You want to have it just set inside. And then, you know, if we wanted to add um, some ribbon, we can do that as well. What is the whole purpose of a boutonniere? I think boutonnieres historically were given to um, your male friends, uh, suitor, boyfriends, or what have you. And usually it was a flower that came from um, the girl's bouquet. So the guy will present her flowers, right? And then in turn, she'll pick up one flower and, and give it back to him and put it on his lapel. I think it's just transformed into the fanciness with the wire. So, of course, if you don't have wire um, and you want to do, um, do it on its own just with the stem, you can do that too. There's different ways to um, accent it. So you can, you know, do a bow. I like to just kind of do a simple knot and then bring it, bring it back. Um, is it groom's boutonniere different than the rest of the party? Good question. Really, it depends on um, the bride and the bridal party. Usually it is. You know, it might be a different ribbon or a different flower, or sometimes they're all the same. It's just, you know what I noticed too? But that it's not just the men wearing it now, right? It feels like it, it, to recognize that you're a part of the party, you're a part of the family. They have a, a, a flower. Um, and I think it's really different cultures. Um, Yep, and depending on, you know, the family and, of course, your budget um, to have flowers for um, immediate family or extended family or perhaps um, sponsors who have helped with the wedding. So they'll have uh, some flowers as well. So it's, it's a nice gesture, definitely. It's like a mini bow. Yeah. Or I'm gonna trim this back. I like to have all of my angles going the same way. Just my first boutonniere. Yeah. So which side? Does it matter? Um, it'll be on your left side, but if you're facing that person, it'll be, yeah, perfect to the right. Pretty, Pat. Why is it on one particular side? Do you know? It's over your height. Oh, that's sweet. It's in that. What other occasions do you use boutonnieres for? Well, oftentimes for prom or homecoming, lots of dances. Um, sometimes for funerals with the pallbearers, wear them boutonnieres. Anniversary parties. Uh, or if anyone wants to wear it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely a wedding, anniversary, a special occasion like that. Um, definitely popular for the dances at school. Does that have to be a rose? It does not have to be a rose, but you oftentimes you see um, boutonnieres being the rose uh -huh. because a rose is strong, it's very hardy, it can hold up. Um, as you can see, it 
it doesn't have a uh, water source anymore, right? We're gonna spray this and then actually once we're ready, we'll refrigerate it and then uh, I think over there. See um, that Kylie Jenner shit dress with the lion? No. That's kind of like a boutonniere. From the Paris show, she wore this dress with a huge lion. Oh, oh okay. Like a real lion? It looks like a real lion, but no, it's more. Well, maybe the lion needs flowers. Yeah. <laughs> How did I pin it? Like, do you pin that was your We won't actually pin um, the wire. So if you guys can see, um, say this is a material, uh -huh. we're going to lay it on the lapel, whatever's front. And then we're going to take some material and take some and go over. This is a thick over and then cut. Oh, out. so you never tend to, yeah, because it's so thick. But if if it's a, a lapel on the lapel, I'll usually come around on the back side and then pin and then go over and come back and then kind of hide it into the lapel. And you can actually kind of bend it, but so you want to make sure it's like secure. So that's where you want to make this a little bit longer. Because sometimes if it's too short, oh, it kind of ends it up. Yeah, okay. it doesn't hold the thing very well. Good to know. Thank you guys for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed this video. Follow us on Instagram so you can follow us on our activities. We're actually working on this super cool flower wall for a local mall for Valentine's Day. See you next time. Thank you, Pat. Thank you.